a pleasant day dear parents teachers and my dear students i'm getting back to you again introducing dr bizay singhal as on the part of management i have called him to speak about the pandemic that is going on do's and don'ts where we can take care of our children where we can take care of one another as the school is going to reopen i have invited him to speak to give awareness to all of us i wish him all the best and all the teachers students welcome back to the school good evening viewers this is dr vijay singhal from moranha on the request of the principal st joseph high school sister maria ate i am here to talk something about covid 19 as covid-19 is widely prevalent all over the world since december first week of the december 2019 which has originated in wuhan province of the china and uh, it has now been prevalent worldwide and uh, it is a very a serious scenario over the worldwide since covid-19 infection is caused by sars cov 2 corona virus and uh, it can spread very rapidly and the first point i would like to highlight that what is the mode of the spread of the covid 19 the first one is droplet infection and what we mean by droplet infection is that whenever we cough whenever we sneeze and whenever we talk there are many particles that comes out of our nose mouth which can go up to 6 feet or 9 feet so one mode of the infection is droplet infection like if people cough sneeze and like frequent hand <coughs> shaking also all these are the mode of the spread and the route of the entry as we all know the virus can spread uh, through eyes it can spread through nose uh, it can enter into the body through eyes nose and mouth so these are the mode of the spread and what could the symptoms we can uh, symptoms that appear in the covid 19 patient so the first symptom and the commonest symptom is fever some of the people 2 to 3% people might have the running nose uh, many of the people have the dry cough which will later on converted to the cough with the expectoration that means the sputum will come out after some days weakness is a very common symptom lethargy easy fatigability is also there and in the children we have seen like vomiting will also be there in uh, loose stool will also be there in elderly patient we have seen a uh, difficulty in breathing can be there and the loss of the appetite could be there and uh, easy fatigability is there and uh, frequent heart rate or palpitation can also be present and now what are the signs we can see in the patient like signs what are the uh, uh, what are the signs observed by the doctors are like we can uh, the higher temperature will get and the falling the oxygen we can measure it by the oximeter sometimes the blood pressure can also be lowered so next point i want to highlight what are the precaution we can take so there are two points in that what we should do and what we should not do so before eating or before drinking anything the hand washing is mandatory so the uh, type of hand washing we can do like if we don't have water and soap at that time so nowadays Uh, maximum use of sanitizer has been done so we can sanitize our hand very frequently before eating and the other thing is that we can wash our hands with liquid soap or any ordinary soap also we can uh, wash our hands the only way of washing our hand that it has to be washed for 20 to 30 second and whenever you whenever we go outside we have to cover our mouth and face with a good quality n95 mask or a we can cover mouth and nose by a three ply face mask also i have seen many of the people they don't use mask properly some of the people they use their mask and the mask remains hanging in their neck some people they don't cover their nose and most of the people like they don't wear the mask so basically the mask it uh, decreases the spread of the virus by around 90 to 95% and better unnecessarily you should not go out of the home it is better if you stay indoors without a proper reason you should not come out of the house and whenever you are going outside 
or whatever you are doing a social distancing of if possible six foot social distancing should be maintained and if possible like more than nine feet is also preferable and whenever you uh, find a child or any of your student uh, you are finding that they are having like fever and all you can consult a doctor at any time if you find a uh, fever you are checking the fever with a thermal scanner uh, there are two modes of uh, degrees in temperature one is centigrade and one other is Fahrenheit nowadays it is very easy to record a temperature with a thermal scanner there is a color coding system if you find a color is pink or red better ask the children to um, consult a doctor or many of the parents they can uh, check the temperature at home also and uh, if affordable many of the parents they can um, keep oximeter pulse oximeter at home also so if any of the children or elderly patient or anyone if they are having uh, like uh, oxygen level less than that of the 95 percent better to consult a doctor if it is lesser than 90 percent then you have to visit a higher center for the treatment and what i prefer like if your child is going out for the school it's okay but they have to maintain all these um, wearing a mask using of the sanitizer frequent hand washing uh, and before entering the, into the house they are advised to remove their clothes outside and uh, take a proper bath from head to toe before they enter into the home and now the what are the what we should not do in this uh, this thing uh, panic situation so avoid frequent touching to each other like also avoid frequent touching of hand mouth nose lips do not spit, spit here and there avoid close contact with anybody avoid you avoid using public transport because in public transport generally people do not follow uh, norms that how much distance has to be maintained and the one thing i would like to say whenever someone is feeling sick it's better to consult a doctor don't go to a pharmacy and don't buy a otc medicine i say otc medicine i means over the counter medicine most of the people nowadays they have started taking otc medicine like paracetamol antibiotics without consulting a doctor it is not advisable to use otc medicine because it causes a uh, term called drug resistance that most of the antibiotic will not work in the later future and these are the things that has to be avoided and now i would like to say something about the treatment part but before that prophylaxis has to be there uh, i would um, ask the parents to uh, feed their children properly proper hydration has to be maintained by asking them to drink plenty of warm water asking them to drink fruit juices in the intermittent time and many of the like supportive uh, vitamins they can be given at home like vitamin c they can be given one sort for the uh, younger children one tablet once daily can be given for the older children two tab one tablet two times a daily can be given and uh, like b complex tablet are also available in the market like covatex czs or mucosal z capsule once daily can also be given and many of the medicines are available in the syrup form so in the younger children syrup form can also be given vitamin d3 supplementation has to be given per weekly and side by side uh, taking care of the physical health is must uh, like we have to do regular exercise even yogas can also be done even morning walk is also feasible or running jogging everything can be done and the like the treatment part many of the people have uh, like these myths that if a patient getting affected with covid 19 the government will take them to um, uh, some facility and the government will not treat them i want to clear one thing there is a two term called covid care center and covid treatment center if a government official are taking you to a covid care center that means they will take care of you at the covid center uh, minimum supplementation of vitamins will be given you will be taken care there that no treatment will be given but you will be taken care and if some alarming symptoms will be raised in the near future the patients will be shifted to higher center those are the covid treatment center where a proper treatment will be given 
and <clears throat> and the last and the last thing is that about the vaccine till now we haven't seen any kind of successful vaccine available or discovered in all over the world till date so the only thing is that we have to boost our immunity with all these uh, vitamins and all we have to take care of our, our uh, general physique that is by doing regular exercise walk and all and what are the don'ts i have already said what we should not do and what are the do's we have already said what we should do but only the main things are like proper social distancing has to be maintained and uh, uses of the masks frequent uh, washing of the hands use of the uh, sanitizer avoid avoiding avoid going to the uh, crowded places all these are very 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 important and uh, the last thing i want to uh, tell you about uh, tests of covid 19 generally we do have like three or four kinds of the testing what most of the governments are doing they are rapid antigen tests so i recommend any of the children having fever cough running nose vomiting loose stool uh, fever with general weakness, difficulty in breathing. I recommend them to go to the government facility, go for the rapid antigen test. Even if they want, they can go to the some uh, like uh, private hospitals also where RT-PCR tests are being done. So basically, we should not fear of the COVID-19, but we have to take care of our children by taking safety measures and proper treatment is mandatory consulting a doctor is also mandatory don't try to treat any fever patient or cough patient at home thank you